Well, hello again. Welcome to another video on my Tracer GT. And today we're going to be installing the radiator guard for the Tracer. This is um, a unit from Evotech Performance. It's a, it's a great brand. I like it a lot. It's a British made and they have this hexagonal, I don't know if you can see there, but it's not really round holes, so it looks really nice. It's extremely light, but it's made of metal. Um, so we're gonna install that. This is different from the one I had on my Tracer 15. There I had the Yamaha original accessory. This time I decided to go with something different, so I'm going with these guys. And another note on this one, I have the instructions here. Um, and the instructions clearly say this is the Tracer 2015 uh, radiator guard. When you order on their website, if you select the year model of your bike 2018, you get this one. Um, and from what I've read in the instructions and I looked at the bike already, uh, it looks like all the mounting points are exactly the same between the 15 and the 18. That's probably why the engine guard works for all of these years. Um, so let's go ahead and install it. Come on. So let's start by quickly taking a look at what comes in the kit. Let me open up here. This comes neatly packaged, not only inside this bag, but inside a cardboard uh, box that's uh, really nice. So of course we get radiator guard. There is a nice logo here. Um, let me put it here. Throw away this plastic. And then there's uh, some rubber um, mounts that we will be using to attach uh, the radiator guard. Now from what I've seen from the instruction, uh, well they say here it comes with six rubber bungs, I only see four. Anyway, from what I've seen in the, from the instructions, we use the original bike screws, so there's no extra screws, and I believe this is just to keep the distance between the actual radiator and the guard, so it does, the guard doesn't hit the radiator. That's what these little rubber bungs are for. So at a very high level, this is what we have to do to install the radiator guard. Let me show you here. First, we will have to remove this side cover together with the blinkers. We will have to disconnect the blinkers inside. And then we are going to unplug some of these plastics inside and use the screws that are on the side of the radiator, which is this part to screw the radiator guard in front and then put everything back in. So this whole piece comes out and then the piece inside it unlocks or disconnects. We install the radiator guard, guard, we'll screw everything in, pop the inner piece back in and then place this whole thing again on the bike. And obviously we'll do it for both sides, so it's a symmetrical job. I can also see that lighting is pretty bad in here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push the bike all the way to that side and I'm gonna work on this side and film for you. And that way we can get some light hitting on this side. And then the other side is just the same, but symmetric. So I won't be filming that, all right? So first we're going to remove these two screws with an Allen key. I don't know the size, it doesn't really matter anyway. Oh, that's interesting. This is like half twist screw. It's not really screwed in, so it's very easy to take it out. The next step is to remove a similar screw from the back side that's uh, over up here. So we need to pull here. Right, I see there is a rubber grommet here and that's what you have to pull to release and then in the bottom there's a little hook that's attached right here so you pull the grommet out and then you pull the cover over and then the next step is to disconnect the blinker table Also very easy. This 
part is extremely light, I must say. It's, I'm surprised with how light it is. So in the next step, we have to remove this screw. This is a normal screw as far as I can see. And then down here, there is a plastic screw that I believe is one of the ones that you push in and it just unlocks. Or maybe I need to unscrew. So let's see what I have to do. So on this bottom one you just have to do a quarter turn and it will expand and open up. Now let's remove this screw here. So this one is a normal screw. I want to show you this step a little bit better because it's, it seems to be a bit tricky. So we've removed this screw, we've removed this other one here, this one stays. But then what we have to do is to pull this plastic not too much, we don't want to break anything, right? But it comes loose. And we need to remove this screw and the other one on top. You can see there, right here. So you have to remove this metal plate where I'm sticking my finger in. We need to remove this metal plate because the radiator guard will go between this plate and the radiator, which is the black part that you see here. So this is not easy because obviously this plastic panel it's kind of putting some pressure on it so let's see how easy I can do this without breaking anything and without removing the whole part so let's see if I can remove these screws how easy it is there we are I didn't break anything this is how the screws come from factory usually they're so tightly screwed that you need to kind of snap a little bit to get them loose one is out. Funnily enough, I just removed it. Funnily enough, I just had the deja vu where I had to remove the same part to install the radiator guards. Um, on my XSR in Portugal and it had exactly the same part which makes sense because it's basically the same bike on the halfway down so that's interesting so we have removed everything that we have to remove on this side we now have to install the radiator guard and screw it with the original screws of course I need to remove the same things on the other side otherwise I cannot really fit the radiator guard with the plastic still on so let me quickly remove everything on the other side and then we can resume with installing the radiator guard. So the next step is to install these rubber grommets on the radiator guard on the spots indicated by the instructions. So here's how it goes. Two of these millions or thousands of holes are not hexagonal but round, uh, two on each side. And this is where we have to insert these rubber grommets. I don't know if you can see here. Uh, see the one right in the middle of my finger? Here, that's round. And the good news is that it's only two of them on each side. So you, we only need four rubber grommets. Um, which is nice because we have four, of course. But the instructions said there would be six coming. So I guess the instructions are wrong. So what we have to do is to push this through these holes like this and then they kind of leave a, a space it's hard to show you on the camera but there's a space in the rear side it's this is fairly thick so I guess this will be um, guarding the correct 
distance between the guard and the radiator. So let me do the other three. Alright, so now it's time to install this on the bike itself. So I don't know how easy it's going to be for you guys to see what I'm doing. Uh, but yeah, you'll just have to bear with me because this is all black and it's tight, tight space and all that stuff. This fits really nicely. There's all these cutouts for the support for the radiator. There's also a cutout for another larger support. You need to wiggle the steering a little bit to get the guard through the horn. But the fit is absolutely perfect. This is not screwed in yet. That's next step. So I think this might be the most difficult part now, which is to screw in the original screws and plate behind this plastic cover that we don't want to take out. Especially because there's a little bit of tension from the rubber boots that keep the radiator and the guard apart from each other, so we need to push as we screw behind the plastic, it's not going to be easy. So I finished screwing the other side and the inner screws on this one are ready as well. I'm going to show you in detail how to put this back together. There's at least one interesting detail here. So let me grab this here. First you need to insert this uh, push plug. You basically insert it with the center side pushed out so that these pedals can go in. So you just put it in nice and easy. And then you push the center, it's, it twists a little bit and it locks in place. You see, this is not extremely strong, it's just to hold it in place. Next one is that screw that's uh, a normal screw it does screw into another plastic in the back, so you kind of need to hold it with the hand there so it doesn't run away until it catches the thread. And then you just screw it in. And you just tighten it a little bit here. Here we go. And now the next step is to install this, uh, this plate. Now here's what I want to show you. To connect the blinker, it's, uh, there's only one way. So there's nothing uh, to be worried about. There's only one way this plug connects. But then what's interesting is that there's a certain way to put this back in. So you got to push the cable through that hole. And then there is a shape here that you squeeze this guy in like this you see so it goes in sideways and it just it leaves there so you see it stays there it doesn't jump around and this will probably save you some uh, some minutes at least figuring out why do you hear something jostling inside so make sure you push this in and it just holds there and now you insert the rubber grommet and the screws on the front and the rear. Oh yeah, another important detail, don't forget in the lower half, you cannot really see with the camera, but in the lower half there's the hook that you need to put in before you insert it here in this rubber grommet. And then, and then you put in the screws. And that's basically it. Uh, so the radiator guard is installed. It's very easy, just make sure you read the instructions before you do it. They're nice and clear. You have to download them from the EvoTech website because they don't come with a kit. They just send you the link, you go there, download, print, and then you follow the instructions. Um, 
this can probably be done in 10 minutes you don't need any special tools at all or any special skills and now the radiator is protected against stones and some insects or something like that and you can ride with peace of mind let me show you quickly how it looks and in the meantime i'll say bye bye thank you